Hello, hello, Greg Attack here, and today we got a composition tier list for season 21 of Dota Auto Chess. So, without stalling any further, let's get right into it. So, like the previous ones, I'll be placing them in the tier list based off a few criteria. Firstly, I'm not going to be factoring in the difficulty of finding the pieces. I'm only comparing one finished composition to another finished composition. Second, how strong the composition actually is compared to all the others in the meta right now. And finally, how item dependent the composition is to actually function properly. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's start putting the compositions where they belong on the tier list. So first up, we got Six Elf. So Six Elf is extremely powerful and is one of the best reroll compositions you can play right now. When you hit Marcy 3 and TB3 in the mid game, most other compositions don't actually have an answer to that. And because of that, I think this one goes straight to A+. It has great potential in top fouring. And yeah, just overall very solid composition. Typically you do need some sort of gold relic to get it going because it can be a bit pricey in terms of finding a big 3 star units. But apart from that, yeah, it's very powerful. Although it is a little item dependent, you really do need some really nice carry items to get your units going, like Marcy 3 or the TB. But overall, yeah, very solid A+. Alright, so next up is another very popular reroll composition, Meepo 3 Mage. Also, extremely powerful in the mid game, pretty much unrivaled by most other compositions unless they reroll as well. And in my opinion, this one also goes to A+. So by, by Meepo 3 Mage, I mean the version of Meepo where you play Shadow Fiend, Razor and Ricky Maru and then tack on 3 Mage later. I wasn't really sure of a nice compact name, so I'm going with this one for now. So yes, very, very powerful in the mid game. Blasts pretty much every other composition to pieces. Hits other people for 20 damage. It's amazing, just overall. And when you want to play this comp, typically you need some sort of gold generating relic because it's quite expensive to hit three cost units. So you, we're talking like family discount, grade vault, even turnips. If you're good with your bench space management, yeah, you can get away with using turnips for this one. And um, as for items, I would say there is a slight dependency on actually getting Starves of Wizardry, Dagons, Arcane Boots to really make sure your composition explodes before they can fight back, but it's not too dependent to the point that if you don't have them, the composition dies. So overall, A+, very powerful, deserves to be there. If you play it and you have the right relic, your top four almost guaranteed. All right, another popular reroll composition, six goblins. I'm pretty sure we all know how this one works. You stay low level, click that reroll button, spam it, get your three star gobos out. And then all of a sudden from 20 to 30, you're pretty much unbeatable if played properly. So pretty easy to play this really, oh, play this composition. I mean, it's very cheap. The best relic you can really look for is shrink rate, but even if you don't have shrink rate, you could get away with playing with pretty much mostly any relic because of how cheap and affordable it is. And not only that, when you hit the units, Usually you do have enough living power to um, build a win streak and even get to level 9 and this composition actually shines the most when you hit 4 warlocks on top of it as well. But just as base 6 goblins, I still believe it is an A plus quality composition as pretty much every time I've played 6 goblins or uncontested, almost guaranteed top 4 every single time. It's just very reliable, very cheap. While it's not the strongest thing out there when you compare it to late game compositions, if you're just there for top fouring, this six gobos is that's where it's at. Six gobos for sure. Alrighty, next up, oh, it's a new composition that's really seen a lot of popularity this meta, which is the uh, four god four priest morphling composition, and this one. You may disagree with me, but I actually do think this is actually a really strong top fouring. A plus composition. For instance, there was literally one guy last year who went one trick pony this composition all the way to top 20 queen. He literally just forced this thing every game and he managed to hit top 20 on the Chinese servers. I mean that in itself kind of speaks to how powerful this composition is, right? 
And not only that, it's quite cheap, like the Goblin build. It's quite cheap, it's affordable. And even if you don't win every round, you'll still receive a Tango for your efforts, which also helps with your top four and capability, because even if you lose, you still can gain health, meaning you just absolutely last forever. And but even outside of that, the Morphling core with Dazzle and Nagasaren is just very powerful overall. The Dazzle and Nagasaren tend to store the game out enough for Morphling to just keep waveforming back and forth. Their composition dies, you win the round, or maybe they have like one hyper carry left that Morphling can't deal with. That's completely fine. What, you get hit for 3 damage, Priest bonus comes in, you get a Tango, and chances are you probably even gain health off of that round, and it's a net positive. So, overall, 4 God, 4 Priest Morphling. Very, very strong at top 4 ring. I think it deserves to be there. And yeah, if it's free, give it a go. It's pretty fun to play. Oh, wait, one more thing I forgot to say. It is quite item dependent based off the first three boxes you open because um, you do kind of need a Dagon or Arcane Boot or even just an Energy Booster to get that Morphling going. Otherwise, too much time goes by. Maybe your front line starts dying. You really need that Morphling to really go off instantly. So yes, I would say there is a degree of item dependency in terms of getting started, as well as just doing damage in general, but outside of that, yeah, still A+, despite that drawback. Alright, next up, 6 Hunters. So, 6 Hunters, I've actually started to see Hunters come back a lot this season. First, all oh, my first impressions of it was that they were terrible, but after seeing it a bit more, I think they, I think... A- minus for reroll 6 hunters for 3 cost unit- oh, for 3 starred units? I think A- minus for now is a fair position to put it because it does kind of fall off against most other late game compositions and even 4 priests, which is getting played quite a bit recently does take care of 6 hunters quite quickly like as for instance the Chen 2, what, what happens if it's still sniper, your sniper 3, your own sniper 3 just demolishes your whole composition, and then boom, you take 20 damage. See, it does have some really obvious weaknesses to it, but overall it is solid, but the main drawback as to why I'm not placing this any higher is because it's extremely, extremely reliant on a telescope, right? Without that, without that item, you're pretty much your composition is going to be doing like half the damage output. And six hunters without a telescope, I'd probably put it down to like B plus or even B. But with a telescope, I'd probably kick it up a notch or two, maybe into A or low A plus. So, based off the item dependency and how strong it can be potentially, I think A minus is fair for hunters. And yeah, overall, it's a reasonably priced composition. You do probably need a reroll relic to help you out to find them at a three star level, but overall, yeah, just an average nice six hunters, boom, straight into A minus. All right. Next up, we got six assassins. So, unfortunately, I want. I used to be a very, very, very big fan of assassins. I'd play it like every second game, but. For this patch so far, I'm still not impressed by the performance of it so far. I think it goes into B plus maximum. The only time I can see assassins really popping off is you somehow get like a Ricky 3, maybe two Ricky 2s. And are only going against other hunter players or maybe mages? Because against a lot of the other compositions like even Meepo or Kia, 6 elf goblins, God Morphling Priest, it tends to struggle to even win rounds in general, even after hitting your final composition. And as a reroll comp, you really want to be super powerful from rounds 20 to 30, and Assassins just, they're not super powerful, they're just average, right? Just compare it to what's in A+, right now, it just pretty much loses to all of them when on a um, fair playing field. And not only that, it's very item reliant, you really need those hard hitting attack damage items early, like you need Mithril Hammers, you need Javelins, you need Broadswords. 
And if you just don't find any, your Slark who already doesn't hit hard is just going to do absolutely nothing, right? So overall, Six Assassins, very, yeah, it's subpar, B+. Plus. And as a reroll comp, it doesn't even get you to top four reliably. I would literally only play this if I was super desperate, nothing else was available. And the whole lobby was playing Hunters, so I don't know. So yeah, B+, plus. all right. Next up, Forakir. So Forakir is kind of a composition you can only play coming out of a Dark Gear Relic to get access to Nyx Assassin. But overall, in terms of top four potential, it's actually quite good. Like, I would put this, I think, over in A. Yeah, I think A is a nice fair position to put it. It's not a super high economy, late game level 10 composition. You can get away with building it at level 8 or 9 out of desperation. Maybe you're running out of options, you're dying quicker than you expected. Just whip this together last second and yeah. I think Forek is a very solid composition for top 4 -ing. So yeah, this composition kind of fits between reroll and late game. It's not really either or. It's a bit in the middle. It's one of those like extra emergency comps you can pull out of your ass if you've got a Nyx Assassin on you. And yeah, overall, when you got the proper rotation set up, let's say you got Broodmother 2 at the back, Broodmother 1's at the front. It's a very, very powerful composition. It overwhelms a lot of other ones with um, <clears throat> three-star seed spawns. It's not item reliant at all, right? Because when you place this composition down, you're pretty much, the, the units essentially speak for themselves. Like when you start getting Broodmother 3s out, Nyx 3s out, and yeah, once that happens, usually just plows through the enemy team and you're good to go into top four. Very good at top fouring. Struggles at top 1, I would say I'd be very surprised if it top 1s, but for 3rd, 4th and sometimes 2nd, yeah, solid composition. So next up we got 4 Undead 3 Hunter. This is a bit of a new composition, so this one I'm not 100% sure on where it goes right now, but I think for now placing an extra 6 Hunter in A- is a um, good bet, or a safe bet I mean. So essentially what you write is it's a reroll comp, you go for 3 stars, it has Winter Wyvern, Drow, Pudge, and Abaddon, I believe, as your four undeads. And to round out your three hunters, you go for Marana and Sniper as well. So overall, it's a quite an expensive build because that's six different units. You got a three star. On top of that, you got to hit a telescope as well to make sure the damage output is there. But if you manage to get everything to come together nicely without dying, I could see it being quite a formidable composition as with just that, that base level 6 composition, I think it would beat out most of the other compositions out there. And it has very easy to um, incorporate improvements as you level up, so you can go for maybe 6 Hunters, or even throw in 6 Undead as an improvement. But yeah, I think it looks like a decent composition, a little item reliant on the telescope. Again, I'm not factoring in how hard it is to hit the units, but it is very expensive to hit six different three-star units at the same time. So I think for now, place holding it at A- is fine. Maybe give it a try let me know what you think of the composition of 4 and Dead 3 Hunter. But yeah, that's where I think it deserves to go for now. And next up, we got 2 Cost Faceless. So this is actually a pretty fun build. I personally do like this one myself, but when it comes down to it, I think in terms of performance, I think putting it in A is a nice little spot to have it. It does power spike quite hard once you hit all your fat 2 cost units, so usually what you run is like Beastmaster, Morphling, Ogamaji, Marana, and Timbersaw. So one problem you might have is that it can test quite a lot of other popular compositions right now in the, in the Morphling, the Hunters, the goblins and Timbersaw, right? And not only that, you really do need strong items to make sure this out, uh, out the composition has enough output. And I think, uh, I'm trying to just picture its strength right now. I do think it is a tad weaker than the compositions above it in general, but it does still, at the end of the day, have pretty nice top four capabilities as, um, it has nice AoE, it has nice focus fire as well in Marana, so 
even if you lose rounds, you will clear most of the board. But come late game, you probably, you most likely will fall off quite, quite hard compared to like even nine mage comps, six beasts, or fat warlock compositions will just out muscle you. So I think A is a nice spot for two cost faces. Okay, so for three cost faces, the next cop, ah, man. So I really wasn't sure whether to add this one since it's so rare, but. If you do, by some act of God, hit this composition and all its units, I do think it is an A plus composition. So it is powerful if you manage to hit a bunch of three star, three cost units, but I'm telling you now, you need to be so unbelievably rich to make this one work, right? I'm talking, you need a great vault into a family discount while building stacks on your Legion Commander to make this thing work and have good items on top of it, right? But if you get there, this thing's amazing. It's amazing. But the reason why it's played so little is because of how impossibly hard it is to hit. So if you're not aware of what this build is, it tends to run Legion Commander, Pudge, Slada, Tree, and a Razor 3. I've got previous videos on YouTube showing what the composition looks like. It's very powerful if you hit it. It'll plow pretty much everything mid game and late game. It scales very well if your Legion is equipped appropriately, has top one capabilities, pretty much guaranteed top four if you hit it. But yeah, almost impossible to put together due to its price and conditions. So. A plus due to the fact that we're not factoring in how hard it is to hit the units, but I'm warning you now, this thing is back and impossible to put together. All right, next up, Nine Hunters. All right, so Nine Hunters, boom, we got our first ST composition. Nine Hunters is absolutely enormous this meta, right? If Tide Hunters in the pool, you're level 10, you may actually hit all your two star Hunters and Tide Hunter. This thing is amazing, right? It has two Naga inbuilt into it to prevent you from dying against magic damage. It hits unbelievably hard from 900 bonus and it has crowd control built into every single one of your units with knockback. So compositions that try to get on top of you like assassins or even elves, for instance, with the Marcy, you just knock them back and they die for free, right? This composition is very busted. If you, if you find yourself with a telescope early game, able to survive and fight your way to level 9 slash 10 with Tidehunter in the pool, make sure to play Nine Hunters. This, this thing is a top winning machine if you put this thing together. And I'd actually say it's not item dependent because you just have so many units benefiting off a huge damage bonus in the Hunter bonus and having the knockback. You don't even need Telescope for it to work. It will just kill everything and knock it back regardless. I think this composition is cracked S for sure. All right, next up, five dragons, also S, but does have a few drawbacks in itself in that if you want to go for true five dragons, you need to play dark gear first to find visage or alternatively, there are variants you can play with two wizards, although slightly weaker. At the end of the day, five dragons is still an ST composition. The way it works hasn't been nerfed at all. What's been nerfed from the previous season to now is how hard it is to put together. But that being said, you can still put it together. It's still S tier. It literally just one shots anything you fight. That's why it's S tier. And I think a common kind of budget variant of Five Dragon that you could probably pull off yourself is if you have Wizards, Spectre, and Techies, you can go for Five Dragon, Four Undead. That's a pretty good combination to run as well. Also ST because four undead techies just kills everything in one shot. But yeah, we already know five dragons is insane. Very, very, very late game. So quite one of the most difficult compositions to put together. But in terms of strength, it is just unparalleled. It just kills everything in one shot before they can fight back. Oh, alrighty, next up, we got four priests. So this is I think everyone's most hated composition right now, the four priest loser no friends composition. This thing just steals your boys and just makes you kill yourself. But at the end of the day, 
it's just a fourth place composition. It'll struggle to actually win you a game. So for that, I think it goes into A minus. So I think Four Priest kind of fills a similar role to Four Akira and Six Mage in that it's kind of a desperation or um, emergency composition you put together if you're stuck between mid and late game and you just need something to survive. Just slap in Four Priests, hope you have a Chen 2, Four Priests, maybe put two gods and a Snapfire in as well to give a bit more output to your composition but yeah, overall, I think it does fit into A minus. It do, it it struggles against solid reroll compositions. Like if you if it'll lose the six health guaranteed, it loses the goblins. You can't even mind control a faceless. Although it is it is good against if you steal the morphling, it's good. It's pretty good against hunters if you steal the right hunters, but it's not really reliable in terms of winning rounds. And yeah, all it does is really just fulfill a role of just surviving as long as possible because when you lose, you gain tangos and by stealing units, you lose less health by default. So yeah, I think A- is fine. It's not absolute trash that I put it in B. It's not busted I put it in A+. I think it's just middling A- is a fair way to go. And yeah, just one thing to note, it's not even item reliant at all, right? All you're doing is just stealing units and you're just... Praying to God you don't lose health every round. Alright, next up we got six beasts legendary. So by six beast legendary, I mean the Gari I mean you run Gari Copter as your main carry and slap in other legendaries that might supplement the um synergy as well. So last season it was quite the S S tier busted composition. Almost everyone ran late game. But after they removed Pango lately, I've really noticed that it has taken quite a hit in um, how hard it is to put together and how strong it actually is. So for that, I think I am just going to put that into A plus for now. It has been knocked off its pedestal a little bit, but I still think it's very, very strong. If you still put it together with Primal Beast 2 as your sixth beast and you somehow hit Gyrocopter 2 as well with good items. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, on top of the items thing, if your Gyrocopter has shit items, this build doesn't really work out. You really need that Hurricane Pike or even the Dragonlance to make it pop off by giving Gyro that extra range it needs. So yeah, I think A plus is a fair position to put six Bs for now. Like if you put it together, it will pretty much blast everything away, but a little item dependent. Tango getting taken out of the game has given taken a hit to its damage output and strength. But yeah, if you are level 9 slash 10, it is still worth going for. It's still very powerful against most other compositions you see on this list. And yeah, I think A plus is where it belongs. All right, so next up, another fave of mine, the Omega Alchemist build. So pretty much it's a two Ogre build. You run Alchemist and Ogre Magi. And pretty much the next synergy you put on just depends on what you've really been given. It can work with 4 Warlock, it can work with 6 Warlock, 4 Beast, 4 Akia, 4 Beast, 2 Akia. It's really up to you how you want to put this thing together. But overall, I think it probably fits in a... Oh, A, A minus. I'm leaning more towards A minus. Yeah, I'd say A minus unless you, uh, yeah A minus due to it. It's average. I'd say the strength overall is quite average. It's a single point or failure composition. So if they have a way to deal with your alchemist, you just straight lose. And it's very, very, very item dependent on your main alchemist carry to make sure it has resistances. It has ways to deal with different types of compositions. Does it have AOE? Does it have? Does it not have AOE? Does it have lifesteal, etc, etc. So yeah, while it can have chances of winning, that's probably more with the 6 Warlock or more Legendary Bax composition, but for your average Alchemist composition, where it's probably mostly going to be an emergency comp of something stuck between mid game and late game, I'd probably say it's about an A- in terms of its overall strength. 
And yeah, let's say maybe you're stuck at level 8 or 9, you're dying quickly, you don't know what to do. If you can just pop out an Omega Alchemist build and hope for the best. <laughs> Alright, next up, 6 Undead. So, while 4 Undead is a really good synergy when you're paired with Hunters or Warlocks or pretty much anything else, it's quite powerful. But 6 Undead by itself is very, very underwhelming. The undead units themselves are quite terrible, right? It's like a Drow 2, Winter Wyvern, Abaddon. They're pretty useless units compared to what you could be running otherwise. So, all in all, I think I just run it as a... It's it's lowest tier B, right? So, but like, ev like, even if you hit Legendary, you can say like, Oh, what if I just run 6 Undead with Legendaries? Well, why not just run 6 Beasts instead, right? Why not just go for like 4 God, 4 Tauren? Why not just run those legendaries with a better synergy, is my opinion. There's no real reason to run 6 Undead at all. I think it's terrible. I don't think I've seen it top 4 once, honestly. It's, yeah. Not good. Go next. Not worth it. Just don't play it. Ah, uh, 6 Knight. Okay, another one that also goes into the BT list. While it used to be a... An absolutely cracked composition in the past. It's just terrible right now. I don't know. They just seem to lose to everything. They're da they're very item reliant on damage. Even their defensive capabilities in the night shields are pretty terrible too. They just die so quickly. They don't beat anything reliably. Just bad <laughs> overall, really. Bad overall. Don't, doesn't top four. I almost never see it. So yeah, six nine and B where it belongs. Alright, so 6 Naga, so... Uh, 6 Naga doesn't really fit on this tier list, which is why I gave it an asterisk. Because it's not really a composition you just end up on, or just slap down and go, please just win against everything else. It's a counter composition you pivot to last second to counteract magic damage compositions like 9 Mage or Meepo SF. Or even like, even Morphling composition. So yeah, I think in terms of just where to put it in the tier list, I'd say like, if this is your final composition and you're fighting everything else that's on this list, I I'd probably just put it in B+. Like, yeah, you'll beat 9 Mage, which is an ST composition, but you'll lose the Goblins, you'll lose the Elves, you'll lose the Hunters, you'll lose the 6 Beasts, right? You pretty much lose to everything you don't counter. So it's not really a build you finish up on, so that's why I give it the asterisk. It doesn't really fit in this tier list. It's something you just pivot to if in a 1v1 situation, if you want to be tricky, you know, and go for that top one position. So yeah, B, I'm just going to put it in B plus for now as a standard fight everything else composition. All right, six Warlock. I think um with six base getting taken down a notch with Pangolia getting taken out of the game, I th I'm starting to see 6 Warlock compositions pop up again, and they're quite powerful, actually. So you go 6 Warlock, ideal with Enigma Warlock, and you can run your carriers like Gyrocopter, Troll Warlord, maybe you can throw in some Trolls, you can throw in some Beasts, and or even Omega Alchemist, and when you put all of that together, it turns into an overall very, very powerful composition, has some, has very, very good sustain, has very good damage output, extremely tanky since you're stealing the enemy's health. So overall, as a late game composition, I think it goes in S. As most of the time, people who hit proper six warlock comps will end up just winning the game or being very powerful and winning against everything else that's mid game oriented. So yeah, very good late game composition. If you're looking, if there's Enigma and Warlock in the pool, Look to play a 6 Warlock, it's very, very strong. And it's not... I guess it is a little item de dependent on your carry, but even without those items, your unit quality is so high that you just blast away everyone else, so yeah. S is good for Warlock. Alright, 9 Mage, that is the easiest S of my life. 9 Mage is absolutely <laughs> cracked this patch right now. Apart from 6 Naga, there's no real counter to this composition it's it's just amazing overall right 
you hit it, you one-shot every other composition. You usually do have some sort of magic damage items or energy booster oriented items, so you go off extremely quickly. Jakiro goes off, just stuns and freezes half the board. Coddle goes off, one-shots all the units and those that live, they get frozen due to 9 mage bonus. It's just an insane composition overall, and even if you somehow lose rounds, you're not going to lose much health either because AoE mages in general just blast everything away. And yeah, 9 mage, it's yeah, just super powerful, very easy to build out of your humaning and priests late game. And it shines especially the most when Zeus, Invoker and Jakira, all three are in. You can guarantee that lob the lobby you're in, they're all going to be trying to spam this thing out. It's busted. Play this if you want a top one. It is late game. You do have to do a bit of fishing for the legendary mages, but... Definitely one of the best compositions you play right now, 9 mage. Alright, next up, Archic here. So, um, I haven't really seen this composition much. I, I'd say this... This square is mostly a placeholder for Arc Warden based compositions. And I think, oh, I think, yeah, if you hit pairs of really strong units, it doesn't necessarily even have to be a Kia. I think overall, I'd say it's A plus in general. The reason why I don't put it in S is because one of the best units to play in Arc Warden Akia was a double Pangolia too, but unfortunately that one's not in the game right now. I mean, yeah, if you can hit Double two-star legendaries, sure, it's probably even S tier, but I don't think that's very reasonable. Getting six legendaries of the same type is just absolutely ridiculous. So most of the time you're going to be playing with two four-cost units, like double Chen, double Doom, double Lone Druid, and they just don't quite hit as hard as it used to, but... It does overwhelm other people's boards if you get the units. It's not too item reliant. And if you're really creative, you can get some really interesting Arc Warden comps going here. Arc Warden Shamans, Arc Warden Mages, Arc Warden Warlocks, right? It's a good extra to add into your composition. So it's very powerful, not item dependent. It's a late game type of build, A plus for sure. You don't even need a Kia. A Kia? Is okay you don't even need it sometimes so yeah it's a it's a weird one i'd say uh, more accurately it's an arc warden comp but arc akia i just keep it as is for now Alrighty, next up four shaman four tauren so previously it would have been an easy s but i think right now i think four shaman four tauren is not quite the best comp you can put together in the game right now my main issue is that with it is the shamans expiring. That I really hate that mechanic part of this composition because once your shamans expire, you usually don't have much left to fight them back with as your three-star legendaries are what's what your main damage output is. So if they somehow live throughout, I think it was like 20 or so seconds that they last. If they outlast it, you're in a lot of trouble. And not only that, it has a very, very slow start. So if they place Ricky Maru's in, or if they have ways of jumping on your backline quickly, your shamans really do get hurt quite, quite yet yeah, quite badly. But I, I'd say at the end of the day, it's still a very, very powerful composition, right? It'll it has a good re it has a um it has a really nice damage output once it gets online. Has nice has nice. Crowd control in Four Tauren. Not too item dependent because your shamans don't even need items to, to start with. And yeah, as a late game option, it's still very, very viable. I mean, it's A+, but the reasons I was talking about earlier are why it's not S rank. So yeah, still viable, still good. Has a few weaknesses that have dragged it from S to A+, but yeah, I think A+, is a fair spot for it. All right, so next up, Six Shaman. So Six Shaman, on the other hand, I think this one goes straight to S rank, actually, because the main upside it has to its counterpart for Shaman is that your units do not disappear. Every time they cast a spell, they go up in level. 
and they do not disappear. So they keep on going and going and going until they're three star legendaries. And if your opponent has is a slow has a slow composition or has not, not enough damage output, before they know it, they're gonna be facing like Zeus three, Troll three, Death Prophet three all in their face at the same time. This thing's really powerful. Only downside the six shaman is is that it's almost impossible slash very very hard to put together because this thing needs either or and disruptor arc warden earth spirit from a panda drop blood seeker from a dark gear pool and two wizards most of the time getting six six base shamans is pretty hard but sometimes you can get five out so yeah, in terms of putting it together, it's it's very, very difficult. Like it's it's essentially based on RNG, but if you can put this thing together, your late game, your level 10, you somehow have two star you have two star disruptor, two star arc warden, and six shamans online. This, this thing is very, very, very powerful. Maybe apart from May it might struggle a little bit against other compositions in S rank as five dragons will kill you before you fight back, nine mage will freeze and blow you away most of the time. But against six warlock it would be do really well. Against nine hunter, all kinda depends on how their hunter items are, but pretty much against everything else, six shaman is just gonna blow them out of the water. Due to it's just unit quality in general, due to the transformation mechanics, so yeah. I think six shaman if you can hit it that's a nice st composition Alrighty, next up we got four tauren four god so this is actually another favorite i love four tauren four god it's been a staple for like the past year i love this comp it has nice flexibility to it. it has nice crowd control it has insane damage output due to gods and legendary so i think this one also goes to s tier this is another staple late game composition I love putting together. With 4 god it has insane damage output with legendaries, especially the flexibility you have to play around with it so you can put in essentially whatever you want that you think works with 4 gods, right? You could have your Zeus popping off, you got a Spectre 2 popping off, a Queen of Pain, Primal Beast even, right? All of these things with god composition are enormous. They provide huge AoE constantly, a large amount of damage, and tend to just blow out pretty much any other composition that doesn't have initiative over you and kills you before you can kill them. Because once this composition starts fighting, it'll pretty much just destroy everything else. So yep, very, very strong staple late game composition if Elder Titan and the right legendaries are in the pool. But it is a little item reliant in terms of getting energy boosters and arcane boots as it needs those items to, to um, get off the ground and start fighting. The quicker they start firing off spells, the better for you. But even with that drawback, the unit quality and syn synergy quality is just so high that I think it just belongs in S tier by default. Alright, next up we got the Koganaut build for Elemental 2 God Juggernaut. So, in the past, when 6 base was pretty much every game, I'd probably put this in like, probably B plus maximum, but now that they've taken Pangolia out, I think it goes in A minus. It's a, it's a solid reroll composition is what it is. It has a very nice synergy in 4 Elemental. Although you do need to go for 4 God these days, but again, we're basing it off finished composition, so we're not going to factor that into its um, weaknesses. It is very item reliant though, it needs good defense, it needs damage, it needs an energy booster or blink dagger or something to get it started or, it, or to deal with backline, so that's a big drawback in itself. But once everything comes together, it's actually quite a powerful comp that has good top 4 capabilities, right? It does. It will beat things like six elf. It'll beat goblins. It'll beat. Oh yeah, it will beat the morphling. It'll beat the morphling build. It does beat some of the compositions above it. But it, or at the same time, it can get obliterated by some of the ones above it as well, right? 
Because if it's, if it's against a four Tauren build, it might just spin on a ward, it might get silenced. It might get, someone might just put a doom in and just silence your juggernaut completely. It's a single point of failure composition, right? So overall, I'd say it's a decent comp. Maybe I could even put it in A. I think I'll leave it in A- for now. It's about A or A-. minus. So yeah, decent top 4 comp. It's not amazing. It's solid. It's not terrible either. It's something in the middle, so A- minus for the good old Cogonaut build. Alright, so next up, 6 mage. So I have 9 mage on the field, on the board, so I figured oh, I'll just include 6 mage, but... Six Mage itself is kind of an unfinished composition. It's not that good. It's kind of something you just run and hope you <laughs> get top five or top six with. So that being said, I think it just goes into B plus, honestly. It doesn't have enough, it doesn't have the quite the same output as Nine Mage. Usually you only have like a Keeper of the Light 2 as your main carry. Very item reliant at this point of the game. You really need a Dagon. You need Staff of Wizardry's, Arcane Boots, you need all of those things to actually kill anything else on this tier list. And it's kind of something you just fall into and just, like, let's say you're level 7 or 8, you're trying to get the late game, you're humaning priesting, but everyone else is beating your ass for 15 damage a turn, and you're just like, shit, I need to put something together now. Maybe you got a few magic items, 6 mage is your man right there. Again, it's one of those compositions that's between mid game and late game. It's not either. It's kind of an emergency comp. You just slap together and hope you don't lose. It's not going to top four. Or, yeah, nah. In terms of top fouring reliably, no. Unless you somehow slap a Zeus and stuff in there. But at that point, you should be going for nine mage. So yeah, six mage. Generally, you have pretty low unit quality compared to everything else. Emergency comp, not that great. Synergy, eh. Yeah, I think B plus is where it belongs. It's pretty average. And yeah, B plus. All right, last up on the tier on the compositions I see in this meta, nine warriors. Quite rare this one, but gi given the shift in meta towards more assassins than hunters, like out of, out, some reason out of nowhere, and with six elves still being up there, right? I can I can see some degree of playability to nine warriors now, especially against hunters. So I think it is an A minus comp. It is kind of a late game ish composition because you have to be level ten to fish for primal beast and troll war troll warlord. Very sturdy counters physical damage compositions quite well. I'd say it's not item reliant on, on at all. Very good units, very good abilities. The synergy is okay. It's good against countering certain compositions, but it also has very, very big weaknesses as well, right? Like against nine mage, I think you just essentially get one shot. Six beasts, that would just beat you in a battle of attrition, right? The longer the battle goes, the, 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 the more the beast stacks stack up and your nine warriors just get shredded to pieces. So yeah, it, it'll it struggle against a lot of the STR and high quality comps above it. But if, if you're in an aggressive lobby with a lot of re-rolling and hunter spamming, assassin spam, physical damage, give Nine Warriors a try. I reckon they'd do quite well against those compositions. And yeah, I think overall, given its strengths and weaknesses, I think A- is a fair place to put it. It's just average, it's okay. It won't, depending on your lobby, it can top four, but yeah, I think that's where it belongs, A minus to me. Anyways, guys, that is it for the tier list. Let me, let me know down below what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Did I miss any compositions? I hope to God not. I was brainstorming this one for a little bit, but yeah, that'll be it for me for this video. I know a lot of you have been asking for some sort of educational or, you know, something to help you out with the game. So I'm hoping my view on the current tier list will help you out in terms of what compositions you want to practice and consider when playing your next ranked game. And yeah, that's it for me guys. 
make sure to like and follow oh no no how is it going and you subscribe to my channel and like this video yes yes i forgot forgotten how it goes already anyway thank you all for watching and yes yeah, see you guys next time bye bye